Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're going to be working on these Fry boots that have more of that Western style to them. So come join us and check out how we do that. I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. So today we've got these uh, suede western style fry boots. We've gone through and cleaned up some of the mud and dirt off of them, but as you can tell there's still a little bit in certain areas, so um, they were actually a lot muddier than that. But we're going to go ahead and uh, start getting ready to resole these. We actually did another pair just like this for the gentleman. I was hoping to do a video on that one, but uh, didn't really have the time, and still don't technically. but. Really had to make a priority for this one because this is the exact same pair, well, exact same style at least as the other pair. And we're gonna be getting these taken care of. And these things, of course, have been used and abused badly, as you can tell. Got holes here in the top. Side here came unstitched completely and came unglued, so definitely need some love on them. But today we're gonna be putting on a JR leather sole like this, John Rendenbach. It's a higher grade level of leather. Some of the best in the world because it's oak bark tanned. So during the tanning process, the fiber structure gets a little bit, or the pore structure gets a little denser and tighter, making that leather sole a little bit, uh, a little bit harder. But because that it's more durable, lasts much longer, and doesn't absorb water or moisture as easily, including salts. So for this gentleman, it's perfect because he's fairly rough on his boots. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and be putting these guys on for him also we're gonna be extending this lip just a little bit because he wants to be able to uh, accommodate uh, these boots with stirrups every now and then and uh, we'll get that taken care of for him as well today but I'm gonna go ahead and start taking everything apart and um, I won't waste your time too much uh, at least on that side of things and uh, get going so we'll see you back here in just a few all right so so far I've got the heel base off show you guys real quick and see those nails sticking out right there those are what are called gripper nails they go on the inside of the boot underneath the insole and uh, they're designed to really secure this back area here and the heel bases and so it takes a little effort to pry these off now this heel base it's it's not doing so well i don't even i don't even think i want to really try to save it so we're going to go ahead and put some new ones on. We've got these pre-made Western style ones that tend to fit it perfectly. Um, I'll probably have to shorten them down just a tad bit, but they'll be a good replacement and upgrade from these because they're, they're done for. But for my tools, I'm going to grab some nippers here and cut off those nails so we don't get hurt. And once, uh, once the sole is off, then we'll remove the nails from the um, from the inside on there, and I'll show you guys how that's done. So, clipping them is just so we don't get hurt while working on it. So at this point, now I'm going to go ahead and um, cut through everything. I'll get my knife here. I mean, most of this is already coming apart, but still got to cut through a few of the spots that are. Still hanging in there. I'll just use a knife like this here. And find a good spot to get under. And that sole is rotting. Now in most cases, usually I end up using a bit of thinner from this bottle here. 
to deactivate the adhesives, but one, this is a suede upper and I don't really want to get any thinner on there on accident. And two, the stuff is so rotted anyways, it's going to peel up very, very easily, as you can tell. Usually I just take my knife and after I got the thinner on, I'm able to stick it in and just cut all the way around. But since we're doing it without any kind of solvent to deactivate the adhesives, I gotta use some pliers to kind of help pull it up and everything. But as you can tell, that cork in there is just shot. It's all grody and everything. So I'll go ahead and uh, pull off the rest of the sole here. Um, toss out all that rotted cork and everything and continue on. So we'll see you back here in just a few. All right, so we've got the sole off. As you can tell, this thing is uh, pretty, pretty rough all around. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the nails here. And the way we do that is I've got the sole insole pulled up a little bit. And so that way I can get in on the inside and remove those nails. But I've got a little piece of crepe like this underneath. And now the little nubs that are sticking out from the clip nails, just hammer them in. If they even go in. Okay, there's one. This one bent on me a little bit, so I'm going to even it back out. Now, it doesn't always work out the way we hope to remove these nails, but taking that extra little bit of time to try to remove them definitely helps because if these boots are expected to last decades and they get resold time and time again, um, the, the nail heads, they build up inside there. The other reason also is because we're going to be moving everything back. This piece right here, this is called the heel run, and we need to be able to move this back anyways, and these old nails are going to get in the way a lot. So we've got to do the best we can to make sure we get them out. There we go. They just do not want to cooperate, though. Usually it's a lot easier, you just hit the nail on the head. Actually, it's on the bottom. You hit them on the opposite side. Man, these are some stubborn nails. There we go. That one went in easy. So that one. There we go. Okay, so I'll take out the cushioning now. And you probably can't really see down in there too well. But the nail heads are sticking up, so at this point I can grab some pliers like this. Reach down in there. Sorry, I can't really get the camera to show in there. Oops. And pull them out. Just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the nails like that. That was a total of, I already lost track, seven of them. So I've got seven of these to remove. And then afterwards I'll start taking off this heel run a little bit more easily and taking out some of these old staples because everything's just splitting here also. And I'm gonna remove the shank because we really wanna make sure we get under there and clean that out and make sure that the shank is intact. It definitely seems like it's still intact. And for anyone that doesn't know this right here, it's covered up in a few layers of leather to give it that nice uh, curvature and everything on the heel, on the arch area. But the shank in here is usually steel, wood, fiber, glass, carbon fiber. Sometimes there's multiple different versions out there. Um, sometimes even just layers of thick hard leather as well. And it's designed to help with uh, keeping that nice, uh, nice curve to the Western boots like that there. 
and uh, you know on top of that it helps with arch support uh, shock shock absorption and stability too so very important for the shank to be in there and if they're damaged we end up having to replace them but we try to save the original ones as much as possible because they fit this boot and they're broken in um, to this boot already so we'll go ahead and continue on and we'll see you back in just a little all right so we're back here again we've got the shank glued back in i've got the sides of that upper that came unglued and unstapled from all the dirt and dust and debris and everything that was in there and all the liquids built up we got that glued up and nailed down the shank uh, was completely intact it's one of the leather ones that's basically harder denser leather that's stacked up and the heel run put on there and nailed in with some what are called clinch nails they're basically like this here we're going to be using them again and uh, they're longer but they're designed to go in and hit this cast iron last here and turn into a hook like that so it really grabs hold nicely now I've also filled in the cork here in this area, usually just the ball of the foot gets filled in. On uh, most western boots there are some that have a full cork uh, piece placed in, different types of builds out there, but this is just one of them. I've got the JR sole, I just put this, pulled this out of the oven so it's nice and flexible for us to be able to stick, plus it helps activate the adhesive. As you can tell I also took some uh, dye here and uh, made it just a little bit darker so that right here in this area it's a little bit easier to work with down the road once we're already doing the edging and finishing out the boots um, without getting any ink on the uppers but I'll go ahead and lay everything out now This sole is cutting a bit close, especially because we extended that heel run a little bit. So that's why I didn't trace this one out. Usually we like to trace it out and cut it, but this one's so close that we're not going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer now. I want to probably spray it down just a little bit with some water. JR sole doesn't really like to absorb too much water, but it makes it wet enough just to work with. So there we go. So it gets that nice curve all around. And now we're gonna go ahead and put it on our press and let it sit there for a few minutes. The other sole is in the oven for the mate for these boots, but I gotta do this all very quick while it's still warm and damp. So I'll go ahead and get that taken care of. Once it's all cured, I'm gonna do the welt press. I'm gonna press all these areas down, cut off the axis, and then we'll be ready to start trimming there. So we'll see you back in just a few minutes then. All right, so we've let these cure overnight nicely and everything. Uh, got the welt pressed down and cut off some of that axis, the sole. So now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and go to our trimmer here and trim all the rest of the axis off. And we've got the original heel bases still here so that we can use them as a marking point so we can mark up where that heel base is going to go. Um, but again, because we extended everything here, we're gonna have to push it down just a little bit further so the overall heel base is gonna be a little bit a little bit longer but i still don't want to use the pre-made ones like that as a marking point quite yet so we're still going to use the original ones at least for the marking but go ahead and get started then
right, so we've got everything trimmed out. As you probably saw, I had to use the sander a little bit on the toe and heel area. And it's mainly because it's a larger boot and it likes to catch at full length on certain spots. So it makes it a little bit easier. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and um, finish out the, start working on the bottom. I'll, of course, sand out the other boot as well. And we gotta do the finish on, on the bottom of these boots here to get it ready and prepped. So we'll go ahead and continue on with that. After I'm done sanding it out, I'll show you guys how I do the finish on this pair. So we'll see you a bit later. All right, so we're back here again. I've got everything sanded out on the bottom. Now we're ready to put a bit of a finish on here. And the gentleman requested some purple. The only problem is my local suppliers don't have any purple available, so I had to mix up my own using some of the Saphir Seraphin creams. Got red, white, and blue. Makes a purple. I had to use the white to kind of lighten it up because it turned out pretty dark with uh, just red and blue at first, so that's where the white came in. But I'm going to go ahead and Start applying this on. I really want to massage it in, and it's kind of nice with the uh, seraphin creams because they have turpentine in it, which is a solvent. So this helps the um, the pigment the pigment penetrate a little bit better into the tighter pore structure of the JR leather. Sorry, it's been one of those days where I'm understaffed and everyone decided to come in. It's always my luck. It gets busy when I'm on my own. It's a little bit harder with, uh, with trying not to get too much cream into that JR logo as well. Still want to try to keep that gold as much as possible. Uh, there we go. Alright, I'm going to set this one aside to dry. Now, as far as the edging, we're going to, right over here, we're going to do a brown on it because it was more of a brownish color anyways. But... Still gotta let the turpentine evaporate and the waxes to dry a little bit. Sorry, like I said, keep getting uh, things going on. But uh, with the JR logo, we try to keep it intact as much as possible. It's just for aesthetics, basically, after the first or second war, that JR logo is pretty much done for. But um, every now and then, because on a Western boot, it's more of a rounded sole, we accidentally nick that gold coloring right there a little bit so you know on this one i ended up doing that this one luckily turned out a little bit better but still can happen but i'm gonna go ahead and finish this one out with the purple let them dry for a little while and then i'll come back around with the brown and uh, let you guys check that out and afterwards we're gonna have to go stitch it while the um, leather's still a little bit soft from the creams all right so we'll see you back in just a little all right, so we've got the brown edging all around there. And at this point, we're in our stitch room with what's called our outsole stitcher. We call it the curve needle stitcher, but we're gonna go ahead and stitch up the welt here with the sole. Uh, there's a blade on here that will cut the channel for us. We did not pre-groove a channel for this one here. Sometimes we do that, sometimes we don't, but on Western boots, especially, I prefer to do the closed channel. Protects the stitching for a longer period of time, but Go ahead and get started on that.
pretty good there. Now we usually spray down the soles, but because we've got the um, the finish already on these ones, we're not going to be spraying them down because there's no point. There's waxes in the finish, and that won't allow the JR sole at all to absorb any moisture whatsoever. We will, however, spray it down later on when we're pressing the channel here. As you can tell, it's opened up right now, and that will kind of help close things up. But at this point, I'm done with this boot. I'm going to go ahead and finish out the other one off camera, and... Uh, sand out this back area just a little bit more and get ready for running nails in here so when it's time for that uh, we'll see you back then all right so we're back here again i've got the back area here nailed down already with some uh clinch nails like this here they're brass ones they're the same ones we used around the heel ran and fixing up the upper and everything and i've already explained that they go inside well I don't know if I did actually, but anyways, they go inside the leather and when they go all the way through, they hit the cast iron last here and are forced to turn into basically a hook. So it secures this whole area here in the back of the heel and uh, the arch area. I already did this one right here, as you can tell there. It's usually five on each side that we do. Sometimes there could be more, sometimes less, just depends on you know the type of build that the boots are. But just having an adhesive there is usually just not enough, so we end up having to use the nails like that. But I already did the back end here, and those were just nailed in for the arch area because we don't want to mess up the look of these. We like to take an awl like this and just pre-punch holes. Make sure we angle them inward into the boot always. That way in case they... Uh, decide to bend the wrong direction you won't have that kind of issue or anything I could just take the nails and hammer them in right away but again they uh, they could end up bending the wrong direction and kind of pop out the side here we don't want that that's one reason the other reason why is because we've got the finish on here and even if we didn't have a finish on here um, because these nails are designed to bend and turn into a hook if they end up hitting something just right or at the wrong angle we hit the hammer or something it can end up um, you know kind of nicking that finish on the sole and we, we definitely don't want that now this I do definitely have to do while it's still a little uh, soft and malleable on the sole from the creams that we used otherwise if I wait until tomorrow put on put in the nails it won't uh, it won't turn out good it'll uh, crack the finish because the JR leather soles are so dense and everything they still have a finish over top um, even um, even before we put it on there was a finish that we had to sand off and it can easily crack so we want to make sure let me scoot this back over here so it's a little more on camera so we've got those nails in. Now I'm just going to get a punch like this here that's flat and just hammer the nails a little bit better so that they sit in deeper. Come on, it's wanting to slide on me. go so we've got that side done I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this other side sand out this right here a little bit there and start going up the heel base that we're gonna be putting on and get that all secured and everything and 
just continue on. So I'll see you back in just a little while then. All right, so we're back here again. I had to really try to hurry up and get these taken care of. We've been so backed up lately, so I did everything else basically off of camera, unfortunately. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, but uh, to kind of recap and what we did off camera, so we attached the heel base. We ran the nails in through the inside underneath the original insole there, and they are the um, gripper nails like this got the little rings around it so when they go in they they really hang on tight uh, out of the rubber top lift heel right there did the waxed edging all around everywhere and cleaned it up some more again we've been going through with the cleaning process on these a few times already because of how muddy they were and then touched up the bottom a little bit more with some old Miltonian purple purple's kind of hard to come by we had the cream already, but it wasn't quite enough of a depth in the purple, and it wasn't really um, showing as nicely. It looked kind of smudgy, so I went through with the Miltonian, went around the edges a little bit better too. So, you know, it's it's a tougher color for some reason with the purple, and especially because these are suede, I'm more concerned about certain types of dyes or sprays. If I use my airbrush, um, kind of getting on the side because the type of dye that we run through, it's more of an alcohol-based dye, and if I get a little bit on there, it'll really bleed into the the suede. So I have to do it a little bit differently. But anyways, at this point, I'm basically done. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of waterproofer on there. I'll do the four season stuff. This one's running empty, but I'm just gonna put on a hefty coat for this guy. Yeah, this one's almost out. All right, I guess we're gonna have to go grab a new one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to grab another one for, for the rest of the tops. And these will lighten up a bit, so yeah, we'll definitely, definitely need to grab another one for the mate here. But um, we'll let that one dry. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and gals getting these resold here with uh, JR Leather. This is the second pair I did for this gentleman. The same one, it's a discontinued pair of fries, I guess, so he can't seem to find them. And he really wanted to get the JR Leather soles on these as well. Um, hope you enjoyed the process of the way it's done usually. I mean, there's a lot more that could be done to boots too. Sometimes it could be something as simple as stitching up one of these pull tabs. Sometimes we have to replace the welt and the shank and all sorts of things. But um, this kind of gives you an insight for, I guess you can say, a, a base, semi-basic resoling at least um, with the new heel bases and everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them. Leave them in a the comment down below or stop by if you're local. If you're not, you can always send us a message or give us a call. Um, you can go to our website, cobblersplus.com. All of our contact information is on there. And, um, you know, if you're not local and want us to work on any of your shoes, boots, or other leather goods, you can always ship it into us. Just uh, follow the instructions on the ship and order tab up top and uh, send them out to us. We'll take care of it. and ship it on back to you so you can enjoy whatever item it was we were working on for you and as always uh, don't forget to like this video subscribe if you want to see more i'm trying to release more and more videos as time goes by and uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell icon when we release new ones uh, we have a lot of other plans for the future for different videos and things that we're going to be doing for the channel and our shop as well so stay tuned for all that and we'll see you next time